Hello, my name is Bjork, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a super simple frog light farm. Now, if you want to just see a materials list and get on with the tutorial, skip to about 9 minutes. If you want to see an explanation of how this farm works, instructions on how to acquire frogs, and a demonstration, keep watching. As of Minecraft 1.19, frogs will drop frog lights when they eat small magma cubes. They come in three varieties, pearlescent, or purple, which are dropped by warm, aka white frogs, verdant, or green, which are dropped by cold frogs, aka the green ones, and ochre, or yellow, which are dropped from temperate, aka orange, frogs. These blocks are a great source of lighting and resemble sea lanterns, but because they can be mined with any tool or by hand, they're much easier to use than sea lanterns, and they're certainly far easier to obtain. Now, for the farm. This farm is placed just on top of the nether roof in a basalt delta. The AFK platform is positioned above the spawning platform so that the only place mobs can spawn is on that platform. Because we're in a basalt delta, the only mobs that will spawn there are magma cubes, so we don't have to deal with piglins or anything else. Any large or medium magma cubes that spawn will intersect with the powdered snow blocks, killing them quickly. The small magma cubes are then eaten by the frogs, who will drop the frog lights. All items dropped will be, will be picked up by a hopper minecart below and taken back to the storage system. Because this farm has a high enough output, you absolutely need a minecart unloading system instead of a minecart running over a few hoppers, otherwise the items will not unload quickly enough from the minecart and you won't be able to pick up most of the drops, resulting in a great deal of loss. You also need a storage system that is larger than a few double chests if you plan on AFKing here for more than a few hours. If you bring in multiple different frog types, it can be helpful to have the sorting system as well, to filter the different drop types. I'll show you how to build that if you choose to, but I'll also explain how you can set up a basic storage system that can handle the output of this farm if you prefer to build that. Now, let me explain how to acquire frogs. So frogs are naturally occurring in swamp biomes, but only the warm type, aka the white ones, spawn in mangrove biomes, and only the temperate type, aka the orange ones, spawn in regular swamps. The cold type, the green ones, do not naturally spawn anywhere. Now, once you have found some frogs, if you want to acquire the other two types, you have to breed them, and then raise the tadpoles in the appropriate biome. In order to breed frogs, I recommend first making a little closed off area like this, and then getting some frogs inside. Now, feed them some slime balls, and they will eventually navigate to a close by water block and lay frog spawn. Now, this frog spawn cannot be picked up or moved in survival, so you have to wait for it to hatch into tadpoles. That's why I absolutely recommend building a little perimeter like this, so the tadpoles can't swim off into a much larger swamp where you will probably lose them. Also, be sure to build a roof on your little hut, because frogs can jump five blocks, so they'll probably just disappear if you don't build a roof. Alright, so eventually that frog spawn will turn into tadpoles, like it just did, and as with fish and axolotls, you can use a water bucket to pick the tadpoles up. And you also get an advancement for that, that's pretty neat. Okay. Now, to get the remaining two frog types, you're going to have to hatch these tadpoles in temperate and cold environments. Once in the appropriate biome, I recommend making another little blocked off area. It's a good idea to fill the entire floor with water and then add all the tadpoles, because tadpoles can sometimes navigate onto land where they will dive very quickly, so it's just a good idea to have a bunch of water here. 
Also, I recommend using 15 frogs total. So that's five of each type if you're doing the three different types. So that's how many tadpoles I recommend hatching. It usually takes about 20 minutes for tadpoles to mature into frogs, but if you speed, feed them slime balls, you can speed up the process a little bit. Alright, now that all of our tadpoles have grown up, we are faced with the task of getting five or more frogs onto the nether roof. Now, this isn't as bad as it sounds. Go outside and build a portal. Now, light the portal and go through but don't bring any frogs with you yet. Now that you're in the nether, take note of the coordinates of this portal. You can do that by pressing F3 and looking at the coordinates on your screen. Now, break the portal. Now, you want to tunnel up to the nether roof all the way up to bedrock. Once you see bedrock, start clearing out blocks until you find a piece of bedrock that is at Y level 127. You can see the coordinates by pressing F3, hovering over that particular block, and checking the right side of your screen. Once you find a block at the correct location, place ladders until you're right underneath that block. Then, throw an ender pearl right at the edge there while holding the forward and jump keys and keep jumping until you're on the roof. Once you're up there, build a new portal at roughly the coordinates you noted earlier. And go through. You now have a portal that's linked to the nether roof. Now, put all of your frogs on leads which is easier said than done. Come here. Two, three, you. Okay. And we are going to take them out of here. Come on. It might be easier if you hold a slime ball because frogs will follow you if you have slime. There we go. Right this way. And they should have all gone through. Okay. Perfect. Alright, now we can walk our frogs to the location we've chosen for our farm. Now, you're going to have to repeat that process for the remaining two types of biomes as well. Just a word of advice though, if you build in a snowy biome, just be sure to put the roof on your little hut before you put the tadpoles in, otherwise you'll get ice and it could suffocate some of the tadpoles. If you're waiting for the tadpoles to mature in a snowy biome, you can take that extra time to harvest some powdered snow, which you will need a lot of. Just be sure to put on your boots beforehand so you don't fall through the snow. Alright, so you will need 878 glass. Any type of glass will do. You will need 332 building blocks of any type, 273 power powered rails, 72 powdered snow, 32 rails, 21 hoppers, 20 chests, 17 blocks of redstone, 8 buttons, 8 comparators, 7 composters, 7 repeaters, 7 redstone torches, 2 levers, 2 observers, 1 anvil, 1 dispenser, and 1 sticky piston. You will also need about 15 frogs. Alright, now that I have found a good basalt delta, 
and I have 15 frogs, five of each type behind me, it's time to start building. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take glass blocks and some blocks of redstone and build a 17 by 17 square with a line of redstone running down the middle. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then one redstone and then another eight glass. Okay. And we're basically just going to do this 17 more times, or 16 more times, <laughs> to get a big square. Alright, so your platform should look something like this. Now, take a solid block and place one there, and then one there, and then remove that block. Place. Now we're going to place all the rails, so place a powered rail here and then all the way to this block of redstone, and then all the way to the other side here. And then on the edges here, we're going to place regular rails, and then continue placing powder powered rails all the way to the next side. Whoops, and let's just do that. There. All right. Now, if you don't have the resources for this many powered rails, this farm does work if you only put one in the middle there, but the output from this farm is significant enough that a little bit of extra speed does make a difference. I did test this with only like one rail in the middle here, and it did work. It was just much slower to pick up items. So I was worried that some stuff might have despawned. So if you do have the resources, it's probably better just to, you know, put as many powered rails as you can down here. Because even having, you know, that many extra entities floating around creates lag. So if you play on a server, it's just better for your server mates if you try to pick up all those entities as quickly as possible so you don't create a whole lot of lag for everybody. Oh, and I should also mention that the reason we're using glass on the bottom here instead of, you know, any kind of solid block is because as I understand it, the game checks solid blocks uh, that are within, you know, the spawning radius to see if they meet spawning conditions for any particular mob. And so it does have a noticeable effect on the rates of your farm. So I did test this with um, just like blackstone at the bottom. And then I also tested it with glass blocks. And I ended up getting about an extra stack of... Um, of frog lights per hour when I use the glass blocks as opposed to using the blackstone. So it wasn't really a huge difference, but that amount like does add up, especially if you're running this farm for a decent amount of time. So if you have the resources for this much glass, I think it does make a difference to actually use the glass. Alright, so once you reach the end of the final row here, put powered rails all the way to the end, just like that. Okay, so the next step is to cover this entire platform with a solid block. Any kind of solid block will do. So we're just going to make a, another 17 by 17 square right on top of the powered rails. Alright, once you're done with that, your farm should look something like this. Just a big square. Alright, now you're going to take your glass blocks and we are going to build up the sides of the platform. So you want to build a glass wall that is three blocks high from the platform and it's also just good practice to have an extra row down here so that the rails are blocked off so nothing can go inside. Because you never know what little mobs might try to sneak in there and ruin your hopper minecart. Alright. Alright, once you're done with that, you should have a big glass box just like this. Now, on this side, you can add a lever there and turn it on. 
So actually, while we're at it, uh, this rail here should be a regular rail, not a powered rail. Okay, and fill that back up. Now, I recommend putting the frogs inside the farm at this point. So build a little walkway up into the farm, just like this. All right. Now let's do this one frog type at a time. So grab the fence, put the slime block in your offhand, and put all the frogs on leads. And then take them up and in. And put the fence somewhere in the middle of the farm and put the frogs on the fence. Now it might take a couple of trips, so let's go get the other ones. Come here. All right, there we go. Ooh, and we've already got our first spawn. <gasps> Yay! Alright, every frog has safely been relocated into the center of the farm, and we even got a single frog light already. Okay, now the next step is to put the roof on this farm. So you want to put a temporary block there, and then get rid of that, and just keep filling these blocks in until the entire farm is covered. You might get some frogs jumping onto the roof while you're filling it in, so if that happens, just push them off. They won't take fall damage. Alright, once you're done with that, your farm should look like this. So, slight note, if you don't have silk touch yet, you can take some doors and you can put them in the side of the farm, like this. And I probably should have mentioned this before we filled in the sides, but you can just add doors like that, and then you can just add some temporary blocks leading up to the doors. And that way you can get in and out, as you need to get more supplies. Alright, now get your powdered snow ready. Go into the farm, and start placing powdered snow on every other block. So just like that, and we'll go like that, all the way to the edge. And then come out to and remove that. So you should continue that pattern all the way to the other side. Alright, so when you're done with that, your farm should look something like this, with powdered snow positioned right in the middle on every other block. Alright, now you can go in the farm and you can remove all of the fence posts. Right, and then you can go out of the farm and replace the doors with more glass, because we are done with the inside now. Oh, and get rid of the um, any stairs that you built leading up to the inside or the top. Alright, now the next step is to go to the corner that is opposite of the corner where we initially placed that solid block. So over here. And we have our powered rails coming to the edge, so get rid of that rail there, and put a regular rail. Now put a solid block here, and then get a lever, and put the lever there, and turn it on. Now replace a glass block there. Alright. Alright, so the next step is to build the collection system. So on the same edge that we just put um, that solid block and lever, count out one, two, three, four, and then the fifth set of rails. And I've marked it off with these two blocks here. 
and get rid of these two glass blocks and then get rid of those two regular rails and replace them with powered rails just like that okay and then get rid of those blocks and we are going to build out seven high so that is one and that is two and then we're just going to keep building up so that's three and four and five six and seven okay and then you want a solid block right here and then um another solid block here you can get rid of that and then take a hopper and point the hopper into actually you want a block here okay and then point the hopper into that block okay you can get rid of this and place a solid block here and then put a comparator oops put a comparator on that block there and then a solid block right on the edge of that comparator there and then you want a redstone torch here a solid block on top of the redstone torch a repeater going right there and then a solid block right here and then we're going to take some powered rails and put them on top of the hopper and then all the way back down to the bottom like that and if you've done it correctly the powered rails should be on all the way to the powered rails that we had there originally so what's going on here is this is a simple minecart uh, unloader. So what happens is when a hopper minecart comes up here out of the farm, uh, when there is nothing in this hopper, the comparator here will not be powered at all because comparators receive power depending on how many items are inside a hopper. So when there's nothing there, there's no power going into this comparator. So this block does not receive power. And so this redstone torch is on, which is powering this block, which is pulled out by this repeater here, which powers this block, which then powers these rails. So when the hopper is empty, the minecarts can come up and go back down. But when there are items inside that hopper, like that, then the comparator is powered, which powers this block, which depowers this torch, and then depowers all of these blocks up here, which means the powered rails are no longer powered. So as long as there is a hopper minecart on here that is unloading items into the hopper, it will stay put. So yeah, that's just a very simple um, minecart unloading system. All right, now we're going to repeat the same thing on this side. So you're going to do powered rails all the way up to the top, just like this. And then another block here, a block here. And then hopper going into that block there, powered rails, and then a comparator here, solid block here, redstone torch, solid block on top of that, a repeater there, and that should be it. So when you're done with both sides, uh, we don't need this, and I don't think we need these. Yeah, so when you're done, and you can get rid of these. When you're done with both sides, they should look just like that. Oh, and be sure to add buttons or carpets or a glass block on top of all of these solid blocks here so that nothing spawns on them. All right, now for the storage system. So I'll show you how to do both a basic storage system and a system with sorting, but no matter which one you choose, you have to follow the following steps. So place a temporary block there and another one there, break that, and then put a hopper pointing into that block, and then you can break that. Now put another hopper pointing into, <laughs> pointing into that hopper like that. Okay, and then take a temporary block and then just come out a ways this way. Uh, so you don't have to come out like a specific number of blocks here. It's just how much storage space you want to have in total. 
So put a hopper pointing into that block and then hoppers pointing into each other all the way back to the beginning here. And then you can get rid of this. All right, now come over to this side here. So if you are doing the basic storage system, then you're going to want to put a double chest here and also a double chest below. So if you are doing the sorting system, then you don't need to have a row of chests here, but you are still going to need a temporary block right here. So I'm just going to put a single row of chests, or a row of single chests just like that, just for now. And then below that, you can put the double chests all the way to the end over here. And then if you want more storage space, you can keep adding chests below, just like that. Oops. All right. So however much space you add just depends on, you know, how long you run or want to run this farm for. So a lot of tutorials will... So there are a lot of tutorials out there for farms that will have like 5,000 items output per hour. And then the storage system they show is just for like a single double chest or like two double chests. And if you only put that much storage for this farm, it will get backed up very quickly. So I just wanted to be sure to show you a storage system that can actually handle, you know, a good amount of output without breaking. So you can just put as many chests as you think you need. Um, so once you've added enough chests, then take your hoppers. And for both systems, you are going to need to put hoppers going into that row there, as well as every single chest below. So just like that. Okay. All right, now take some composters and put them on the tops of every single hopper. So this just helps reduce lag a little bit. So it's always good practice to put composters on top of your hoppers. All right, so if you're just doing the basic sorting system, this is it, you're done with this. And you can skip to the part where we build the AFK platform. If you are building the sorting system, then keep watching. All right, so if you're building the sorting system, you can get rid of this row of temporary blocks here and then come back here where you have the line of hoppers going into those chests and you are going to build three blocks out and you have to use solid blocks for this just like that. So build out for every single row of chests that you have. All right. Now come down here and put a row of blocks in the middle, just like that. And then you want another row on the edge, just like this. Okay, and build that all the way out. Now take repeaters and put them all the way into, uh, put them out like that. Okay, now take your comparators and put them facing out from the hoppers, just like that. Okay, now take some redstone dust and cover all of these sections here. And then take more solid blocks and you want them coming out of the hoppers, or coming out of um, the repeaters like that. And then put redstone dust on top of all of those blocks there. Okay, now come around to this side and you want to put redstone torches on those blocks right there, just like that. Now you're going to want to take an anvil. Okay, so you want to rename them to something that you wouldn't normally find. So just like that, you can get rid of that. Okay, now come up here and into the hopper so they're just kind of not facing into anything you want to put four blocks just like that and if you've built it correctly they should just stay there okay so you can put four more in each and every single hopper okay perfect uh, now, so in order to get these to filter items, you actually need the items that are going to be filtered. Um, so, we'll just take one of each of these. And then if you also want to have some magma creams, because this farm does output those as well, you can have one of those. 
So just um, put one of those in each and every single a uh, single hopper just like that. So that should filter for each of those items. Okay. And if you don't have any frogs light frog lights yet, of course, because we haven't run this farm yet, then you can wait to do that step and you can just build the AFK platform, let the farm run for a few minutes, come back down, grab the items and then put them in the story sword sorting system. Okay? All right, now I've added extra rows for the magma creams, as well as some labels for each of the items. Now, it's a good idea to have a waste removal system for this farm, because what could happen is things get backed up if you have too many items, and all of these hoppers up here fill up, and you can't have new items going into the farm. So if you want to add a uh, excess removal system, add a couple blocks out here, uh, put a dropper here, get rid of those, and then a few hoppers leading into the dropper. Now add a temporary block below the dropper, another one there, uh, add a comparator facing out like that, and then a sticky piston right there. And then put an observer on top of the piston like that. So it should be facing into the comparator. Now put another block on top of the observer and then another observer facing into that block. So what this is, is an automatic um, dispensing system. So if you have a bunch of items going into this dropper, they will all get dispensed. So uh, what we want to do is we're going to burn these items. So you can put a block here, any kind of block, and then surround it with um, glass and get rid of that. And then set this block on fire. And just for good measure, let's put another glass block on the top. So now if you have extra items moving through this farms, like maybe a bunch of unwanted magma creams, they will all get dispensed and burned so that you never have any backups in your system. Oh, and add some composters on top of these hoppers just like that. And I think you're also going to want to spawn proof these blocks here, so uh, get some buttons. And put a button on top of that. Um, and buttons and carpet will break if you uh, put them on top of that observer. Um, so you can just put a glass block uh, right there and that should prevent uh, magma cubes from spawning on top of that observer there. All right, we're almost done. So now you can add your hopper minecarts right there. So two of them, oh, and we need to, I think, remove these glass blocks. Okay, and then we're good. All right, so those will go through and pick up all the items. So now if we go up to the top and go roughly to the center, I think is here, um, you can scaffold all the way up to build height. Okay, once we've reached build height, then we can climb all the way up to the top of the scaffolding. Once you've reached the top, let's build a little glass platform. So add glass on each of the sides of the scaffolding, just like this. And if you have an elytra, it's a good idea to break all of the scaffolding and fill in the platform like this. So you can go back to the bottom and break it. Oh, it looks like we've already got a lot of spawns, so that's exciting. Alright, so now let's do an AFK test for an hour and see how many items we get. Okay, it's been one hour. Let's go see how many drops we got. So in total, we got 4,714 frog lights and 551 magma creams. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this farm. If you like the tutorial, it'll help me a lot to like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.